Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Thursday, March the 14th of 2024. We continue to work our way through on Thursday evenings the uh, Lenten devotional resources provided by the Presbyterian Church in Canada. And some of our prayer resources this evening come from the Iona community, um, Eggs and Ashes. Our opening is a poem written from the perspective of the Trinity. We tried in so many ways to communicate our love. If communication is not what you say, but what people hear, then what we said was warped and wrenched into distancing prescriptions that had no heart. You asked for food, we sent manna. You asked for drink, water flowed from the rock. You asked for directions, Moses brought the law. And on and on. Still you grew more distant, more deaf, more blind. Memories dulled, speech slurred, dreams dissolved into wander dust. And so we did what families do when confronted with calamity. We drew straws. Shorty lost. He came to share your plight, your fight, your night, and point you toward tomorrow. Let us pray. Gracious and patient God, we hope, there are times when you must feel that we were sent to try you with our prejudice, our apathy, our intransigence, and our refusal to receive the grace that we are made whole by the cross of our Lord. Forgive all our ingratitude, our small-mindedness, our stiff necks, and bind up our brokenness. We are without excuse, but bold to ask pardon from our Lord who lived his life and died his death and gave his flesh and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us share silence and consider where we have gone wrong. Amen. Our first scripture reading this evening is Psalm 34, verses 11 to 22. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. And our second reading this evening is from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 25 to 37. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. 
Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth so that you also may continue to believe. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For those of us with a more controlling nature, this is perhaps the most difficult limit of being human, having needs. In God choosing to become a person, living, walking, breathing among us, God chose to have needs, all human needs, food, water, shelter, physical activity, etc. It is a humbling and radical act that God made this choice. In the book, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis writes, the eternal being who knows everything and who created the whole universe became not only a man, but before that, a baby, and before that, a fetus inside a woman's body. If you want to get the hang of it, think how you would like to become a slug or a crab. In one of Jesus' final statements on earth, he said simply, I thirst, or in other translations, I am thirsty. This points to the full humanity of Jesus, the suffering that God underwent in human form. The implications of this are huge for our theology, believing in the full divinity and full humanity of Jesus. Yet the implications are also significant for our humanity. What does it mean to have needs and live into that reality? It should affect every area of life, how we purchase things, how we consume, how we take, how we eat, and how we share. We should also remember that we also have much to share with those who lack much. As Christians living in an affluent nation like Canada, our stewardship of resources has an impact not only on our families, but on systems all around us. Food and water, especially drinkable water, are finite resources globally. Energy is not only finite, but has implications for climate change. Even within Canada, food is not a resource that is shared equitably. And there are many communities, especially indigenous communities, that do not have drinkable water. Food bank usage has skyrocketed over the course of the pandemic and throughout the period of inflation we have seen recently. The way we live out our needs in the world matters to our faith. And following a God who gave up God's own needs for our sake matters to the way we live out our needs. Let us pray. We pray for those people who are in poverty. Help us to learn how to share what we have until they sense your abundant supply. We pray for those people who are thirsty. Send us to be messengers to share your living words until they find the source of life, never to be thirsty again. We appeal for those people who are in hunger. Make us to be your bread, broken for others, to share and be shared until all are fed. Amen. Our blessing this evening is actually um, the words of a hymn that I would like to share with you. And so we close with this. Gladly we pray, gladly we praise, gladly to God our longings raise. Sure of God's love, 
needing God's grace, meeting God face to face. Prayer is a gate. On it we swing, sometimes our thoughts just wandering. But when we need heart for the road, prayer opens wide to God. Hear then our praise, heed then our prayer, Lord of the here and everywhere. We put our lives where they belong. You are our hope and song. God be with you this night and always. Amen. Good night.